Um, well, thank you for having me. And um, first of all, I'm so excited to just be without a mask, um, alone <laughs> in the too. shop. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it, when you're alone, you can be uh, maskless and it feels kind of good. Um, so I uh, started Juniper Flowers in 2003 and um, I had worked at several shops in Boston. I'm from Braintree, Massachusetts. And I moved out here in 1996. Um, and so previous to moving out here, I had worked in a couple shops in Boston and I had worked um, freelance in New York City. And so just decided, a friend got me into flowers by default. Um, we started working in a grocery store um, right while we were in college and we were both cashiers. Um, and then she got promoted to the floral department and, mm -hmm. um, and then went and worked at a different store. And so I took that little, it was not even, a, it was not a design position. It was like repricing things, but um, I did, you know, start learning all the names of flowers and I just got excited about every now and then something cool would you know, come across our, you know, our path and, and it wouldn't be a common flower. And so then I started actually seeking out jobs at flower shops as I went to, I went to art school and worked these jobs at little flower shops. Um, and then, you know, moved out here and I was freelancing and my friend started her own flower shop in New York. And then I thought, well, I could do that here. Um, so I did, I started a shop and I was in the lower lobby of the Sorrento Hotel. And um, all I had to do was do their lobby floral and mm -hmm. some restaurant florals for free rent. And um, so that was amazing because the shop was tiny. Um, and so that just opened up doors all like everywhere in Seattle. I met so many people through the hotel um, you know, we worked with the catering department, the sales department, we did tons of weddings there um, and just grew. And then just, I opened a second store in Lower Queen Anne. And then we decided to not work out of the Sorrento anymore because it was just too small. And they had that one little elevator um, <laughs> that everybody- You used. know, I have to say that just sounds like so much fun. And the Sorrento <laughs> is one of my favorite hotels. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. What a blast. And I remember so your great. creations, I have to say, because I was always so inspired by them. Wow, <laughs> that's so amazing. Um, and so then, you know, I just, and then the Queen Anne, and that was fabulous. Um, and then this store in Fremont, um, I've been here for seven years, I think. And so this is my 18th year in business. Um, Congratulations. That's a big you. deal these days. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really great. And we're just getting bigger. And I thank you, Christina. Um, and so uh, it's just awesome. And we are just, we're just in the business of, you know, putting the good out there in the world. And um, I'm really happy to be able to do it. I'm thrilled that we, um, you know, floriculture was uh, deemed essential by the governor, you know, back in great. like, right, April. So we were able to come back, you know, end of April and, you know, not open to the public, you know, but we did deliveries and it's, you know, uh, we can just keep doing deliveries. Um, well, I would say yeah. that flowers are essential. There is no mm -hmm. question <laughs> in my mind. I mean, that that's a very important thing. So it really, yeah, we say what you need to say, you know, um, so enough of that. Uh, okay, I have, tell us, um, show us about you, how to make a wreath. Okay, so I have, um, there's a couple, I mean, there's so many different things you can make. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to show you a few things first and then go through step by step, um, at least one, and then we can put that aside. And then I could show you a different uh, design with a pre-made wreath because sometimes people just want to buy that one that's already made from the grocery store or you know Swanson's or a nursery um, mm -hmm. and and that's okay too because you can just either wire things into it or hot glue and uh, I have a crazy option I love the smell of hot glue so, <laughs> um, but I can also show you how to attach things 
without the glue. So that's, that's fine too. Um, so I'm going to start out with, this is a, um, in a, I mean, it's in a, it's a wire, a metal hoop. It's just golden color, you know, so, um, and it's, it's nice and hard. And so it's not bendy and you really can't crush it. Um, and that is, that this is my favorite because I like to make, um, kind of a half moon. It's a very modern style. So it's just, this and it has a little bit of the metal showing up at the top and that's a great way you can hang it on a command hook on your door um, or if you wanted to do something for inside you know you can just you know stick it on a nail or whatever it is um, and so I do like to start out and this might be helpful for newbies um, this is green uh, corsage tape and it's sticky on one side um, when you stretch it. And this, I'm just gonna put this around a little bit of the wreath form to, cause the, this is metal and it's a little slippery. And so this will help the greens kind of just stay in place as you're wiring it on. Um, and it, it just gives it a little bit of more of a tacky surface for the greenery to not slip. So I'll just start at one side and I'm gonna unroll a whole bunch and then rip it off. And the whole thing with this, it's only sticky on one side. So you wanna remember that, you know, get it started first, then rip it off. Um, and then you can quickly just wrap it. It's kind of like a pull, pull and wrap type of method where you're just twisting it all the way around. You're saying, oh, wow, she's doing that really fast. It, it you know, it's practice. <laughs> um, and so this will just keep going and going and going. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Um, I did just wanna show you that that is what you do because that'll drive you crazy watching me do whole half a hoop. Um, and so then it is like that. And so it's very, it's a lot tackier. Um, I would normally do it from here all the way up to, you know, a little bit less than half. Um, okay. And so today we're working with a couple different kinds of um, cedar. Let's see. Um, and then this is a cypress. And all of this, you know, I mean, if you're li if you're on a wooded property and things are just blowing and falling in your yard, you can go out and collect for days and then have a whole bunch of greens to use. I don't have that luxury. I do have to buy this, um, but it is all local from a farm that's in Snohomish. So I like that. Um, and then this is the, um, the uh, Douglas fir, which is my favorite, it smells really good. And we've got the Leland Cypress and I had some cedar, which I don't know, I can't find. Where are you cedar? Oh, this is flat. So it's a flatter cedar. And that's always kind of fun as an accent. Um, let's see. All right, so what I will do is I start, so I have some piles of pre-cut greens, but I'm gonna show you how to cut some big pieces off. So this is a, a full branch of the Douglas fir. And so you wanna just use all of these laterals. And so I just start cutting, you know, this is kind of a little too short, but I just start cutting off all of these branches. And they become this, this size and I just kind of do that. And all of this is usable. Um, so even the short, shorter pieces could be used to hide little wired areas. Um, and I put that aside. Um, and then something for even something that's long and um, you can just kind of go down and cut a quarter of the, you know, a quarter of the way and then do another. So you get three quarter, three pieces out of one of those. It was starting to be some bad math there. Sorry about that. 
Um, and then we'll just cut off a little bit more here. So make sure we have enough. Okay. So what I like to do is take a, a whole variety of greens. Um, so you can take a fur and a piece, uh, some pieces of the cypress. And, um, you know, if there's like a chopped off spot, you can hide that with another piece. And this. And really, if you just mix it up, you're going to be fine. Um, I think the harder thing to do is to be really specific and say, you know, I want this should be here and this should be here. You know, I think if you just use it all mixed and, and hold it in your hand um, like that, and then you've got a nice handful, right? I could probably put in another piece or two, something short. Um, okay. And then, uh, and I can, uh, I think we have a list of the, some of the helpful tools and um, products that I have. So I've got like zip ties and chenilles, which are, um, you might know them as pipe cleaners, but once you're a designer, you call it a chenille and you'll, you'll, it, it'll change your life. You say the word chenille and people are like, oh, they know what they're talking about. And um, Jean Louise, we did have uh -huh. that list. So we'll send that oh, good. list out again Excellent. tomorrow. Yeah, okay. And so this is um, called paddle wire. So it's just wire that's all wound up and um, I keep it on the paddle. Um, it's just easier to use. And I will, so I'm gonna take the end and just wrap it around my greenery to secure it, the greenery a little bit together first, because starting off, it can be a little hard to get it on the hoop. Um, and that's where, so I would start at my, um, where I put the green tape. And so I'm just gonna hold it in front, see if I can get a better angle here. Um, and then just know that you're gonna just keep wrapping around all in the same direction. You know, you don't wanna, forget which way you wrapped and then start unwrapping your greenery from the hoop. So I just did about three really tight turns with the wire and see how it just stays right, oops, stays right on. And so you just have to keep your one hand on the hoop a little bit and then one hand on your fistful of greens. Um, and then you can um, pull Pull down, so pull some wire, and if you want to place your hoop down, and then grab another handful, and again, just kind of mixing it up, nice, nice bunches. Uh, let's see, so we've got another nice fistful here, and then you. So you don't have to, you don't tie the, uh, wrap this individually. Again, this is like the little bit of a trickier part where you will just hold it on what you have already done. Um, and so, okay, so this is like, this is the nub, right? These are the ends that's kind of, you know, that doesn't look good. So you place the tops over those ends. Um, and so not like this. You, know, you don't want to go too far. You want to get pretty close. So you're basically just um, going about three inches the way down. And then you'll hold on to, you can change where your hand is. You can grasp this and then just start winding around here. And that'll happen. Your hoop is going to flip but at least it's not slipping the other way, like around this way, because the tape is really sticky. Um, and then you just, again, keep wrapping. You don't have to wrap right to the end right there, because you're going to cover that with new, you know, another fistful of greenery. So that. Okay. 
So Jean Louise, while you're doing that and working, we have a couple of questions. So yeah. what is the fancy, called, fancy name for the sticky tape? Oh, it's just um, called, it's just called corsage tape. <laughs> corsage so tape, okay. Uh -huh. Yep. And then what is the best place to find this and then also the um, pipe cleaner? Okay, um, so the chenilles. The chenilles, sorry, chenilles. Uh, C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Um, so they can be found with the corsage tape and any other type of tapes or wires, um, I would think that people are familiar with Michael's. Yeah, I would the think The craft so. store, Michael's, um, or Joanne Fabrics. I feel like Joanne has some more floral things. Um, yeah, as, they have quite you know, a bit. Yeah. Um, and then also, I mean, you could just call your local flower shop. I mean, we would sell somebody you know, some tape or even a roll if we had enough to sell a roll to someone, which we always do. I have this by the case. <laughs> so, um, you know, and we would sell somebody a little, you know, 20 pieces of wire or one of these pieces of paddle wire. So, I, you know, if you're close to a florist um, or have, you know, your favorite, uh, then, you know, they could probably sell it to you. Um, if you can't, you know, get it. I mean, you could all this stuff you could probably get online. Um, of course, I'm going to be an advocate and say go to your florist um, as opposed to, you know, just getting it on Amazon because, you know, it's kind of easy. But, you know, that whole local shop local um, is nice, you know, because we do a little so happy I have dance. A question. So, Jean Louise, <laughs> I do have a question about that. Yeah. So, Okay. You know, if you're not going to your local florist, like for yeah. you, you, for instance, is there a local yeah. source that we could go to and support outside of a Michael's yeah. and a Joann's? Um, um, does the wholesale florist, um, well, uh, is that open to the public? And You know, the well, in Seattle um, on Fridays, the grow, Seattle Wholesale Growers Market is right. open to the public, but they don't have supplies. Oh, um, and so but they do want, have beautiful flowers. Yeah. I do want oh, to gosh, they do. for them. Yeah. Yes. yes. And that's all locally grown flowers. And it mm -hmm. is an amazing opportunity to get some things that you can't get yeah. anywhere else and for very right. reasonable. So yeah, um, that's and down it, in the photo. Yep. And that is, um, you know, right now, you know, it's, they start to, oh gosh, you know, it's the summer, the spring and the summer. And into the fall, definitely in the fall, that they have the best um, products. You know, the winter is tough. You know, it's like yeah. winter is pretty tough. Um, but they still can get a lot of things from California. So that is, you know, that's wonderful. Um, um, I'm thinking there are, you know, the where we get our supplies is called Floral Supply Syndicate. And it's also in Georgetown. But I don't think they sell to the public um I'm not sure I feel like they don't and but you know of course it's worth a call you know um and that's floral supply syndicate um and that's where you know we get baseware and all these the hard goods um but like a Joann's or a Michael's um if there's any other craft store um locally but though, I mean, those are the best places that I think that um, people will find what they're looking for. Okay, so this is, is this where I have the camera and all of this working out to be able to see? Yeah, oh, I can't hear you. You're gone, you're muted, Joni. Okay, Anna Smith says, yes, it's great. Yes, it's Perfect. great. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, like, see how you, I mean, you can really, you can do whatever you want. Like, this is wild, right? It's like a little head wreath. Um, so you could have, I mean, you could really get creative. We could do the whole uh, hoop with this. Um, you know, I think that doing, um, you, you know, kind of like a side, side sweep or the half moon. Um, that I, I'd like to show you, I think is, you know, it's pretty fun, it's modern. Um, 
let's do that. And um, so I probably at some point need a, a time check to keep myself because I do know how long certain things take. Um, and I can't see the time on my phone. So when we hit um, it is um, 625 and we have okay. a question. So that's perfect. Um, okay. Could you tell us how to keep it alive? Do you missed it? Or do you just let it outside? I mean, the person who's asking is actually from Florida. So it's a little different than here in yes. Seattle. <laughs> okay, so evergreens, you know, they, you know, they would like you could miss it, um, for sure. That would would definitely help. Um, you know, the cold here or in, you know, on the East Coast is what, you know, kind of keeps these things preserved because it's like putting them in, you know, the cooler or the refrigeration. Um, and so I would say yes, misting would be a really good idea. Um, you know, they when they dry out, they do just get crunchy um, and they kind of just get crunchy. And you've, of course, you've seen, you know, needles fall off and things. And a lot of the time that's because you've bumped it or, or touching it. Um, you know, if it's starting to get crunchy and there's nothing you can do about it, I would say just don't manhandle it because then, it, you know, everything will fall, you know, not everything, but a lot of needles will fall off. Um, but yeah, we um, keep garland in, we have um, fresh garland in the flower cooler right now just in a plastic bag that we had misted and put in some um, wet it's not a paper towel it's an eco wrap and they're the stem wraps that keep flower flower stems fresh um, so we put that in there with the in a paper in a plastic bag garbage bag with the garland um, and that stays nice and you know fresh so yes to misting um, I would say don't use, um, you know, if you're gonna make your wreath, don't use dried elements on it um, because if those get wet, they could get moldy or, you know, just have like, you know, they could they could get ruined because dried elements are a little bit more um, fragile. Okay, so I just grabbed a whole bunch of other, another new fistful and I'm gonna go and, do my other side here. So, um, so I did snip off the wire from the paddle. So I have it and I'm just I'm pulling on it really tight and I'm twisting it and I kind of will just weave it through some of the other wires here. Kind of like when you're, you've just sewed something and you're um, doing that tying off the thread. You can just wiggle this under another piece another piece of wire and just kind of wrap it just do that a few times so it, it kind of ties it off and then um never really you don't really ever have to cut anything off short because then you have the potential of losing the wire just take the wire and just you know just you just push it down hide it you won't see it um so the other fist full of green i'm just going to take and hold and get a new wire started and attach it right, right to, I will actually um, go ahead and secure this like I did the first one. You can just take this and wrap it around again. So you have a nice tied little swag and then place it. So I was going to place it the other, you got to place it the opposite direction. <laughs> and then again, twist all the way around in several different places, right? You don't want to keep twisting in the same place. You want to go kind of moving up and down this area. And you can um, kind of push your hand through some of these greens that are already on there and just wire or through there just makes it a little more secure and if you have little stubby areas don't worry about that because you can hide it with more greenery you'll see what i mean see how this is um 
right there. It's like, oh, look, they attached it in two places. So that's always where you can put some ribbon or you can add some ornaments, pine cones. Um, you know, there's all sorts of little tricks to hide things. And I'll show you those too. Okay, so I am gonna take a little bit of a longer piece of the wire right now and cut it off. And again, I'm just gonna wrap it around and secure it through another piece of wire just a couple times. This greenery smells so good. Um, that's one of the things that I love about the classes. Um, because everyone all of a sudden is just like, wow, it smells so good in here. Okay. And so this is pretty, I mean, it's pretty, you can get a pretty, this is a 12 inch hoop and that's pretty big. Um, and I did this on purpose. This, I made this side a little less dense and a little shorter than this side because I I'm just, I'm very asymmetrical. Um, you can have it be so it hangs that way, but I do like to be able to try to hang things that way. Okay. And so I'm going to do a quick take these greens, put them somewhere else, make a second wreath tomorrow. And just got to get this cleared out. It's a great thing is throwing everything on the floor. It's always really fun. You know, if you can work in a garage or outside under a carport or something, just put some plastic down on the ground, just throw it all on the floor. So a couple of questions while you're cleaning okay. up there. Um, mm -hmm. Someone mentioned crowning glory. Is that an option to use on um, evergreen? You know, you can. We use it on all our flowers and greenery. Um, I can't say I have, I mean, we've used it on these. I think you could totally do that. Like crowning glory or um, the other option is floral mist. Um, okay. It's just a different brand, you know, different brand. Floral Life puts out floral mist. Um, and we actually use floral mist all the time on our fresh flower arrangements. So anything that goes out the door, we'll spray that. Um, and it does kind of lock in that moisture that's already in there. So that is a great question. And if you have it, you know, go ahead. If you don't, you know, I, I don't, you don't have to go find it. Um, you could just use water, but um, I do think that it, that would help if you have it. Okay, um, that's good okay. to know. And then also just a, a quick question on mm -hmm. preserving flowers. Is there a really good way to do that? For, um, I mean, preserving is so different than drying, right? Um, yeah. Preserving. How about drying? Is really, flowers? Okay, is that, drying is better. Yeah, let's start. Uh, let's it's start. easier. Um, so not all flowers will dry. And it's a lot of it's just trial and error. We have, um, we have a whole wall of, I wonder, I think I could ah, pick this oh, up and oh, show you. Ooh, fun. We have this. We have this awesome wall of um, dried roses and hydrangea and berries, gomprina, um, celosia. There's really some cool things. I can I can definitely get this back in the right spot. Oh my I gosh, kinda, Jim Louise, this is my heaven right in your store. Kind of just <laughs> mark. Okay. Um, and so all of that product we just took out of water and tied it together and hung it up and hung it upside down. Right. So the whole thing with hanging it upside down is, um, you know, the stems will stay straight um, and just keeping it in a dry place. You know, you don't want, you don't want to take wet flowers and do, you know, then they'll just get moldy. Um, and so, the, and this, I was just going to actually say, um, this is a dried banksia and that's um, such a cool flower. Um, and so I was going to ask, what do we want to do for, you know, I can make this um, a more natural wreath. Or we could do kind of like that glitzy, um, bright, and you know. So we could go one way or the other. Not that you can't Whatever combine you them. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> but I think that you know this is very traditional. Um, you know, some berries and some um, ball ornaments, uh, that kind of glitzy, shine the shiny type of route. 
Um, you know, and so all of those, you know, we could get on there like this. Um, you know, that's really pretty. I would like to do the dried um, and just do a little bit more natural for you because um, I do think it's, it's, you know, it's really popular. It's, it's on trend right now. Um, and you can get a lot of dried goods, um, a lot of different places. Um, you're just seeing like farm stands and, um, you know, like the growers market and um, even some just like random online stores that sell dried flowers. Um, and I think it's really exciting. So, uh, and it, it is my favorite right now. So I will do that. Um, so I'm gonna start with this great focal flower, which is the Banksia. Um, and I don't, I'm gonna wire it in. I don't need to glue this in because it has such a long stem that I can actually insert, cut the stem just a little bit. And so I've got the pruners here, which is a great for fresh and dried stems. Um, and then my wire cutters for the wire that I was cutting. And so I'm gonna nestle this into the area where I want it to be. And then um, the, and then I'm gonna secure it with, I have an 18 uh, gauge wire, which is a little bit thicker. And then I also have a 24 inch, it's not inch, 24 gauge wire. Um, this is a little bit more malleable. Um, I'm actually going to secure it in with this thicker wire. So, and you know, once you've got your grains put in here, um, as long as you did it tightly, you know, like this isn't going anywhere. Um, it's in there really tight. So don't worry about, you know, shoving, you know, a piece of another piece of green or a dried element in there. You're not going to damage the greens if you've got them in, secured in tightly. So I'm just gonna put that in the place right there. Kind of fun. Um, where's that wire? And I will go in um, around the stem on one side and then take the wire and bend it around the stem and just let the pieces of wire meet up in the back and then grab it and pull it in the back, securing it tightly. And again, you don't have to, yep. Jean Louise, as far <laughs> as trends go, are you fine? Yeah. Good job there. Um, are you finding that people are liking more of the glitzy, um style or more of the natural these days you know it's really leaning towards more natural um we've been doing so many fresh flower arrangements with dried elements in incorporated into it mm -hmm. um it's just it's so fun the the amount of textures that you can get is it's such a variety that i think it's just really exciting for people um and a lot of people are you know, I have a couple clients this year that we decorate, you know, we decorate their houses and, you know, put up their Christmas tree and, you know, do all that decorating. Um, and a few of them this year have, you know, they're like, I don't want glitter. I don't, you know, let's not, let's get off the glitter. Let's do, you know, more modern, simple, um, you know, clean, you know, A, you know, the glitter gets everywhere and you're picking it up and vacuuming it up until like March or even April. Um, and then too, you know, I think, you know, it's an environmental impact too, um, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and so it's, it's great that people are, you know, starting to kind of, you know, a little bit move in that direction of like, huh, maybe I don't want the glitter. <laughs> well, I think people are going back to nature. I mean, we're seeing that with people mm -hmm. hiking more, you know, buying homes or Absolutely. visiting, you know, places like I am, like in Mazama right now, you know, to be, uh -huh. you know, close <laughs> to nature and not in the city. Um, yeah. As far as the different dried flowers that you would use, uh -huh. you know, to make this natural look, what else would you use or recommend? Yeah. Um, well, I have some really dried um, 
spiral eucalyptus right now, it's petrified. It's so crispy. Um, <laughs> Love and, <eucalyptus>. so, <laughs> and you can put already dried eucalyptus into a wreath or you can put in fresh eucalyptus and it'll just dry out on its own. Um, mm -hmm. I have this great dried um, and it, since it's already, you know, in a night, you know, it's crisp. So I can really put it where I want it to go and it's not going to move where fresh I'd put it in and it might look all cool and droopy and swishy, but then it will turn and change, which is also very nice. Um, I have a wreath right here um, that I had made the other day. So it's all fresh evergreens and we put in fresh um, eucalyptus and it's dried out and so it has you know it's done its own little thing um already which is kind of fun and um so i've got some i've got the dried eucalyptus here i have these um it's their scabiosa pods and those are already dried um i have some pine cones we have um actually fresh cotton that i like to take um the cotton out of and then you're left with such a cool little pod. And those are really fun. And then what else? I, I have to ask have... some questions yeah. here. Where do you get okay. fresh cotton at? What's your source? Um, I got it at the Wholesale Growers Market. Um, okay, everybody and... needs to go there. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, and they do They do have more. Um, I recently got some. Um, but it's oh my gosh, like <laughs> it's such a cool little uh pod, right? It's a great um, pod, beautiful. You know, I have like these little branches too. Um, like you can use anything, anything that you could wire. You know, I mean, these are heavy, so I would have to wire them in. Um, you know, but you would just hold, you know, hold it and wire it in. And that could be a base for some mushrooms. I do have mushrooms too. They're mushrooms on a stick. So they're dried. This fell off its stick, but that's something that you could um, glue in. Um, there's dried lotus pods, but you have to be, well, we have to be careful with these. We don't send these out um, in anything unless somebody requests them because people have that, um, it's like called Triptive pho tri, tri some kind of phobia that the pattern of this makes them sick. Um, wow, that is fascinating. I that uh, is something like, new I just learned. Tonight. I know, <laughs> and I it's called. I think it's if you can easily Google it. Um, um, like Natalia, that, like, will you Google that yeah. while we're on here? So um, and then Christina. I think Christina is um, actually. You can um, tell us: is the wholesale grower open? It's open every Friday, right? Yeah, yeah, every Friday to the public. To the public, and it's uh, ten a.m. to to noon is the public hours. And um, I think there's a small charge about ten dollars for the public to go in. I think so too, because we do yeah. have, um, uh, you know the we do um we do have pa buyers passes that we pay for every year um mm -hmm. to shop there that i'm ha happy to do because you know the fact that it just goes Absolutely. to you know supporting the market and keeping them there um that is definitely worth it such a great resource and somebody just asked what is scabiosa what is the um common oh, name for that yeah uh scabiosa <laughs> let me um you know i'm gonna quickly grab a piece of a one that's fresh so i can show you what it looks like um okay great okay okay i'm running to the i cooler. don't know the common <laughs> name either sarah so that's a great question yeah uh, okay here we go okay i'm back so here is um the okay. scabiosa flower and um you know and then you know the pod is under here right and so all the petals are gone and then you've just left with that pod and it dries out and it's so just pretty. like look at like these are these are a family so, so pretty it's like it's so cool that way okay um so i'm quickly wiring in another piece of like bark or wood or i don't know like a branch um I think that is kind of fun to put in like another branch. 
I don't know. I don't know why I can't just have one in there. I have to put in a second one. Um, any other questions about when we get to the glue or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're going to get to the glue soon, but okay. um, what's your favorite type of um, wreath to make? Um, you know, I love doing the one that I'm doing now. Um, I think that's really fun. Um, but I also like uh, doing some that are just made out of dried materials. Um, mm -hmm. Like all, you know, already dried, whether it's um, different dried grasses, um, campus grass and, and just all sorts of dried roses or hydrangea. Um, I just like to get a nice form down and then just add all these little bits um, and pieces of dried flowers. It's, it's so, so, so fun many of way. us, um, there's several people I know who live here in Seattle who have beautiful gardens and mm -hmm. things are, I mean, I definitely have some pods in my yard and hydrangeas, uh -huh. Christina does too. Um, how would you best use those in a wreath now? Um, for with evergreens, you think, or no, like I mean, like the hydrangeas or say mm -hmm. echinacea pods. I mean, would you dry mm -hmm. those out first? It sounds like you would, yeah, yep. Um, and you know, for hydrangea, I would definitely because it's so brittle, um, I would definitely make sure I had a good. Um, base of either green, you know, dried greenery, um, or, you know, dried like palm leaves, something that's really stiff that you can kind of just glue the hydrangea into because that's going to require the glue. Um, because it, it's when, pretty okay, delicate. Okay, so speaking of glue and glue guns, you uh -huh. said that they're your favorite and you love the smell. So when do you best use them? Right now. Or you can just time? turn it. You, you just can just turn it on. Time, you <laughs> turn it on and just leave and it. Mag in, and you know, magic happens. In is the that shop. What okay, so <laughs> I, what I'm going to do right now is I have placed. So one of the tricks to you know getting things where you really want it, um, you've got your wreath ready and you have your elements and you've chosen them. I always will insert, you know, my dried stems or my glitzy bling glitter something into the places where I want that, where I know I want them to go. Um, so you can just, you know, start doing this and then you glue them after. Cause that way, you know, you know where you want it to be. You're, you're, you've got your artistic eye going here um, and you're, you know, placing things. And then you can step back. What we do when we have classes um, and you'll get to do this, Joni. Um, so we have, I know we have a <laughs> wreath, we have a hanger on our, one of our French doors. And so anytime you want, you can go and hang it up and stand back and, you know, inspect it and figure out where you want to put some items. Um, and so I have just placed in my dried That's eucalyptus gorgeous. like that. And uh, That's so just my, beautiful. Thank you. My Beautiful. sticks are wired in, you know, they look pretty silly with that wire on it, but I, I'll hide that. Um, and so I've, you know, just quickly placed the eucalyptus. Um, so once you know where it is, then you can do the quick. Um, and I always wear gloves uh, when I'm working with this kind of, because I can't stand the sap. Um, it's too, you know, it's too much. And then you stick to everything. So I, I will wear these. Um, they're the nitrile gloves it's there these are like atlas um and they have that sticky kind of yeah, those are good on ones. it you know and they're just getting to really fit tight and you'll be fine and then you can wash these too with i dump rubbing alcohol on them and just do that and you know run them under the water and it all the sap comes off um that's great so that is yeah make sure easy. that they fit in their tight. there's yeah. nothing worse to have gloves that don't fit you right yeah, um, yeah. So while you're working on that, we had um, a question about what's what are your best tips for drying hydrangeas? Because um, Denise has not had much luck. So any oh, tips no, no. for her? Okay. Um, okay. So uh, I would say it depends on where you know if you're getting your hydrangea from the yard, it's going to dry better. Um, if you're buying hydrangea from a grocery store. Um, it's probably South American grown and it's a whole different breed. Um, 
it just doesn't dry as well. It, can, it will wilt before it dries. Um, and so you want something local. You want some, you know, your own hydrangea from your yard or something from, you know, growers market when they have things from um, Oregon or um, California. Uh, so it does kind of depend, you know, kind of depend on um, where your hydrangea is coming from. But, you know, we just take it and when it starts to look like kind of crappy in the in the in the water um or like we sent out a whole bunch of you know weekly accounts or something um and it cut you know a week later we pick it up and it's kind of like petrified in there yeah. in the vase you know which it does um we just take it out and again you know just dry off the stems because you might have slime or or whatever yeah um, <laughs> um and then we just do that thing where we just tie them in a little bundle and hang them upside down and they just perfect dry just just dry and crunchy i have like blue and purple and like the antique red and it just there's still big fat heads um just, just really dry so um, beautiful and, and so i've I noticed think, yeah speaking of cleaning off the i know i'm gonna turn the corner here but um on when yeah. you were putting that eucalyptus in there you you pulled off the base of the um leaves oh, so yeah. that you could just stick can you talk about that because i noticed you did that so yes yep 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 so you do want to clean the bottoms of you know whatever you're going to be inserting you know this well this one's already half naked um but you know just take off anything that is below where you Perfect. want to use and then cut and it really just needs, you know, a little bit on the end. So it's kind of just a, you know, a quarter inch of glue. Mm -hmm. um, and some people like to squirt the glue onto, um, you know, maybe a plate, you know, if you use a paper plate, you're gonna melt the plate a little bit. Well, plastic, you would melt the, pl the plate, but a paper plate is okay, but it does suck it up. So if you have a, you know, ceramic plate or some kind of plate that you don't care about getting glue on, um, actually, once it dries, you can kind of just peel it off anyway. So you could use a dinner plate or something. It's not well, your I know what I, my first purchase is going to be is some florist tape <laughs> and a glue gun and some wire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so I'm going to quickly just get all of these little tips in. I did that one. So this I'm just um, going back around. I'll try to get a little closer here um, to where I had inserted and just do a quick you know little glue on it and then stick it right back in where you got it from and you know the glue is weird um if you use too much you know you can get glo gloopy or you know and it's like a big little wad and we snot kind of you know that <laughs> a little gross um but it does wait until it dries and then pick off all the strands you know there's nothing worse than like getting it somewhere and then you grab it and you're burning your finger. Um, just wait until it dries. You can get, all, you know, all the glue off that you need to. Um, so I have my eucalyptus in and my mushroom um, and my little, actually, I just shoved that mushroom in. I didn't even need to glue it. And so I'm going to put in a little bit of my, um, cotton. So I only have two pieces of that and I want to put it over here near my mushroom so it really shows it off. Sometimes you sometimes you just put it a little bit in and it just totally you miss the mark and it just goes right through and doesn't stick and you know just it's fine you just have to try again with more glue. And let's see, set up another crazy darker mushroom that doesn't have a stem on it. They, they did have some sticks on them, um, but it fell off. So I'm just gonna take the whole mushroom and glue it onto this piece of wood or the, I keep wanting to say driftwood. It's not driftwood. It's just a branch. <laughs> um, and that'll help hide my um, wire that I have on there. 
which is always good, you know, to just put something on to hide where you put a wire. And where did you say, Jean Louise, that you got the mm -hmm. mushrooms from? Um, the mushrooms are, I did get those from um, Northwest Wholesale Florist, which is our other wholesaler. Um, mm -hmm. I got them there and they have them at Floral Supply Syndicate. So the hard goods store um, will have something like that as well. Okay. Um, and so and you then know, I'm, you sure, I'm okay. sure the bigger stores like Michael's have all sorts of options yes. as well, even though we don't want to shop at those big stores, yeah. we want to shop I mean, local. <laughs> Right, you want to shop local, but you know the but the Michaels, you know, they are there for you know for they actually. I mean, the Michaels stores really do help out florists sometimes, where like you know you might be in a pinch or something, and the whole and your wholesaler is closed because they close early, right? Um, you know, if you don't get your product by noon, and uh, you know you're in a pinch and you need something, you, know, you could go to Michaels or. Joanne's or something that is, you know, instead of waiting till, you know, five or 6 a.m. the next day to get it. Um, and, you know, it is a place too that we can send someone to, you know, if we don't have something or, you know, or we only want to sell it in a giant box because I don't know, whatever. Um, so, but so they do, it does, you know, it does help out a little bit, you know, when, you know, you need to kind of send somebody to a different place because maybe you don't have it and you want to be helpful. We always try to send um, folks, you know, somewhere. If we don't have it, we like to give them a good recommendation of where to go. Um, so what are we doing with time? I do want to show you. That's how a to, good um, question. We have about five on. minutes left. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We could so go I, a couple extra minutes. Okay. Um, so I'm just adding these scabiosa um, to, to, to stand out up off the greenery. Um, so I'm keeping their stems a little bit longer and I just glued in at the tip. So those crazy things are like standing straight out off the, the greenery, which is kind of fun. Um, so much beautiful texture. I love the texture. Here is where, um, you know, people will, I think this is the, the biggest part that will make so many people happy. Um, because well, we've everybody, that too, Louise. <laughs> I know, everybody is going to be like, you know, kind of to the mechanics showing, right? Um, you know, no one wants to, you know, they're, ah, look, you can see my glue, you can see my wire. Um, so I just took another mushroom. And just stuck it in there and it just stayed right so i'm just gonna leave it um because it's not going anywhere so you can have it like that or i could have turned it over because the other side is a little bit has even more texture um but what i'm gonna do now is um you can hide it with you know okay so i've got burlap and this is about what is that one two, three, like four inches, I think, four to five inch um, width burlap. Um, you know, it depends on what type of wreath you made. You know, um, you could do a dried wreath that's real natural and then do like a little bit more um, glitzy ribbon. Um, that, or, you know, here's a fun kind of snowflake one that's got a little gray in it. Um, I, and then there's this cool plaid. Um, I love that you um, have options for, yeah. you know, the natural wreath and you can yeah. dust it up or you yeah. can make it just as natural as it is right now. That's so yeah. fun. And um, so I'm going to just try, I'm just going to see what the plaid looks like. Um, so basically, I mean, there's so many different things you can do with ribbon. I've just taken a piece. Um, and so you can basically just wrap around your wired area. And, and then you where do you get your ribbon from, Jean Louise? Um, you know, the these are from um, Northwest Wholesale Forest. Um, mm -hmm. They do have a little bit of a supply area in there. So, okay, so even that, right, I just hid 
so all pretty. that um the wire that was you know just kind of causing some serious anxiety right because you're like <laughs> how am i gonna hide that you know um and you could keep going with just your dried elements and just kind of keep you know you we made the wreath do that and then you can bring all your dried elements in and then just keep kind of whittling down until you have no space and you've hid the um all the wire um so you know that would be like a way to hide it with that um the burlap you know it's such a natural you know kind how, of would, how would you thing. tie that can you show us how you would tie yeah. that to like yep. like put a bow on it <laughs> yeah yeah okay so you could um you could actually just wrap it around and secure it in the back right and then you have just the band um you could just take uh tie it from behind you know come from the back and then um just tie it kind of in a knot um kind of like that like a messy knot uh, let's just see what that looks like um, cut that off a little bit. Um, you could like that's your messy knot tie. That's which is beautiful, kind of fun, right? Um, and easy. I love and how simple <laughs> that is. I mean, yeah, I think easy. anybody can do that, Jim Louise. Anyone? <laughs> they can. So. Um, and then, uh, if anybody really wants to um, stick around, and if you really want a bow. Um, which is great, you know, if you want to do the bow. So I would recommend having um, ribbon that has wire. So it's just called mm -hmm. wired ribbon. So it's got the two wires on the sides. Um, and then, so you have a long tail, you're holding, let's see, you hold it in one hand, you have a tail, and then you put, you do a loop up and grab it, and then do a loop down under. So it's like, this is your plane. And you do a loop mm -hmm. above and then a loop below and you're always just grabbing and and you know holding it with your like a thumb and a first finger um, the wire definitely just, hurts. oh my gosh if you didn't have the wire you you'd hate me uh Game changer. <laughs> there's that um so i usually like to do three loops above my hand or above the you know and then three below um and you always want it to be so you have a tail that hangs this way and a tail that goes that way um and then you could take i take two of the thinner wires um and you can grab just wrap it around where your it takes the place of where your hand was and you pull it really tight this way so your mm -hmm. um loops all smash together like that and it's all about the tautness, right? And you just grab it and twist it a couple times. And twist. And then you have um, a bow that you can, you know, like just move all these around. That's so simple. You know, it's really it's simple. Beautiful. And then, and you could take another, you know, do another one and then just pull up, push them together to have a lot more oh, loops. Idea. It's easier than making a ton of loops in your hand and then, you know, then they get all floppy. I you know, if I need a lot of loops, I take, I make three of these and just grab them and put them all together. Um, and so then you would just cut that off and you've got a, you know, you could have a little hanging um, and that you could put instead of in there. And, you know, uh, let's just see what it looks like. You know, so the beauty of the, this burlap is I just tied it in a knot. Um, and this, so I did use the two uh, wires. Mm -hmm. So now I've got two wires on one side and two wires on another. So I can just put it down onto pop, my wreath pop that and then down. wrap it around. Um, it definitely has, you know, it gives it a, diff a different look. So just take it and wrap it around the back, do a couple of twists. Don't worry about the excess. You can get rid of that later. Um, you know, and it's still cute. It's, you know, it's hiding a little bit too much of my mushroom. So you can kind of push it. That's the wire, beauty of the wire. Wired ribbon, like you can push it down in there. And I think gotcha. that's kind of, you know, that's kind of cute too. So if you want to get some color in there, you know, and like just be a little more traditional. 
um, with that red and green and just kind of work your way with that. So is everyone just as inspired as I am? I'm so <laughs> inspired. I can't wait. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll make one for myself. And then I'm going to make one for right. friends and family yeah. as well. So I, yeah. Yeah. you know, this is one of those times of year that I think it's so important to take time for yourself and to, you know, and to really create. I mean, it's time for creation, you know, whether it's your Christmas and holiday decorations or making a wreath or making ornaments for people or cookies. I just think coming back to our home and to you know what's important is just such a beautiful thing to do right now. You know, truly every year, it doesn't have to be this, this year of 2020, which has been so crazy. I love how you hung that with the- you No, know, you, I was gonna say you can do a little matchy and then just add a ribbon. Okay, I love be, that. Yeah. <laughs> Does everyone love that? That's just Yay. like the, the added touch that really makes yeah. it. So uh -huh, uh -huh. Jean Louise, I cannot thank you enough. This has been so fun. Like I can't think of a better way of spending this evening um, with you and everyone who's joined us. Did mm -hmm. anyone else make a wreath while we were doing this? I would love to know. Um, I thought Christina might be, but um, yeah. I know that I'll be inspired to make some this weekend. And um, right. Natalia, if you would um, bring up that information about other events, thank you so much. You're so I'm welcome. Looking forward it was to so seeing you. Fun. It was so um, fun. Very soon. <laughs> thanks for everyone to, that are, joined us this evening.